live in high definition from the CBS4 studios. This is CBS4 Daybreak. A tragic ending. Did you guys get into an argument before she left? It wasn't, it wasn't like an argument. We had an emotional conversation, but I'll leave it at that. But it's, I just want them back. <laughs> A Colorado man who made an emotional plea for the safe return of his wife and two daughters is in jail this morning, reportedly now confessing to murdering them. What led police to the father and husband? That's coming up later in the newscast. Good morning and thank you so much for waking up with CBS4 Daybreak. I'm Gloria DeLeon. And I'm Nate Barrett. I-10 eastbound is now open after an overnight road closure. Crews have been working on the heavily damaged utility bridge over Interstate 10 in downtown El Paso. That's the one crushed by a semi during a crash three weeks ago. Here's a look at our CBS4 Warren traffic map. The same closure is happening again tonight. You can expect TxDOT crews to close I-10 at downtown starting at 8 o'clock. It will reopen tomorrow morning at 5. Now, Amanda, it doesn't even feel like El Paso. I'm used to no. that dry heat, but yeah. it's a little muggy. And a lot of people have been saying that it feels hotter than it actually is. They're feeling like it's been triple digits, but we've been out of the triple digits for some time now. Mm -hmm. And really, that's going to continue as we are expected to see more rain in our forecast starting today with our best chances coming up pretty soon. So if we take a look at those current temperatures right now on the map, you can see El Paso. Now, taking a look at your top stories this morning from around the world, President Donald Trump has revoked to the security clearance of former CIA director John Brennan. The president pointed to Brennan's criticism of his administration, calling his remarks unfounded and outrageous. Brennan is vowing to continue to speak out. Nate Barrett will have more on this developing story in just a few minutes. Twelve jurors in Alexandria, Virginia, begin deliberations today in the bank and tax fraud trial of Paul Manafort. Both sides presented closing arguments to yesterday. Prosecutors said Trump's former campaign chairman hid at least $16 million from the IRS and lied to secure millions in bank loans. Defense attorneys sought to tarnish the reputation of the government's key witness, Manafort's former business associate, Rick Gates. And the state attorney general's office in Pennsylvania says its hotline for victims of Catholic priest sex abuse keeps ringing. This follows the release of a grand jury report that accuses about 300 Roman Catholic priests of molesting more than 1,000 children since the 1940s. The report also accuses senior church officials, including the current Archbishop of Washington, D.C., of covering up accusations. A judge in Malaysia will rule later today whether to dismiss charges in the trial of two women accused of killing Kim Jong-nam. He's the half-brother of Kim Jong-un. If convicted, the women face the death penalty. Right in the middle of America's opioid crisis, there's a new wave of drug overdoses. This time, it's linked to synthetic marijuana. More than a dozen people were sickened by the synthetic drug in a Connecticut park as many as 60 people overdosing, while others nearby watch in horror as first responders administer a life-saving drug. There were several. There were some that were unconscious, some were, the, were nauseous, um, uh, lethargic, um, some in respiratory duress. In the nation's capital, more than 260 people OD'd on synthetic drugs during a 10-day period in July, with first responders across the country reporting a spike in cases. It's a nationwide problem that people are self-medicating for several different reasons. None of the overdoses in Connecticut were deadly. We're now finding out more about the New Mexico compound that was raided earlier this month. Authorities received a tip about it after a woman who was there contacted an Islamic counselor in Georgia. The private Facebook message asked for money to, quote, save myself from starvation. The information was given to police and the compound was searched on August 3rd. 11 children were found there living in filthy conditions, reportedly being trained to commit mass shootings. The El Paso Fire Department is warning everyone about a new phone scam. Several people have reported receiving calls from someone claiming to be from the department or from the El Paso Firefighters Union. The callers are asking for donations. If you get a call like this, hang up and call police. If you've already fallen for the scam, you need to go to the police department and file a report. 
A disturbing crime trend to report this morning. El Paso police say there's an 11% increase in cases of sexual assault over the past year. Police say a lot of cases originate from meetings set through online dating sites. They recommend for you to meet the other party at a pre-planned lo location. Tell family and friends where you're going and who you intend to meet. Take your own car or arrange other means of transportation. A new warning on secondhand smoke. What researchers now say can happen later in life. That's coming up on CBS4 Daybreak on your side. Well, I'm really hoping for some rain today, at least over my house. Yeah, that's your favorite thing. I feel like Nate's <laughs> always saying more Every rain, day. more rain, more rain. Well, Gloria. it cools us down. It does. It but does. then you have to deal with all the humidity exactly. after, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. No, I agree. And Gloria <laughs> and I, we're not used to it. We're hometown girls. We're not used to this humidity. <laughs> Give us that dry heat. That's what we're looking for. And unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. If we take a look right now, though, satellite and radar is showing that that moisture really sticking with us for at least your next 72 hours. Satellite well, a six-year-old from Utah got a hold of her mom's Amazon account. She probably ordered probably close to $400 worth of stuff. Find out just how her mom reacted once all of those boxes arrived. That's coming up on CBS4 Daybreak on your side. We have new information on why police shot and killed a man earlier this month in Las Cruces. We've also got newly released video from the incident. Police say the father of 29 year old James Bishop called 911 and told dispatchers his son was having a mental breakdown and was off his medications. When police arrived, they say Bishop charged at one of the officers injuring her with a baseball bat. After she tried to tase him but was unsuccessful, a second officer fired several shots at Bishop, killing him. The Bishop family did not wish to give a statement at the time and say their focus is to bring their youngest son home from basic training so he could attend his brother's funeral. We're noticing a dangerous trend near the entrance to post in far northeast El Paso, especially in the early mornings. Now, multiple crashes happening within days of each other in the exact same spot at nearly the exact same time. They happen July 17th, 18th and 23rd, all between 530 and 6 o'clock in the morning. Each time drivers were going east on Loop 375 and either didn't see the backup from the Sergeant Major off ramp or tried to avoid it and caused a chain reaction. And we found some people who all work on post. They tell us they get to work around the same time those crashes have been happening. It's not really as bad until you get to Montana out into the Sergeant Major area. Sometimes you can get in smoothly and sometimes not. TechSot told us they are aware of the problems in that area and said they would be working with Fort Bliss to address speed and traffic flow. A man says he survived for nearly a week in the wilderness by eating berries and bees. 40 year old Matt Matheny got lost hiking around Mount St. Helens in the Pacific Northwest. His parents said he was on a day hike and had no supplies. So the nurse and formal Eagle Scout did what he had to do to survive. He was killing bees because they were attacking him every day. Protein and berries is literally what got him through. He found no water. He's in the hospital for observation. Doctors say, aside from being dehydrated, he's in good condition. That first day, there was about seven boxes, I think, and then we've received about three more. A six-year-old in Utah went on a shopping spree with her mom's Amazon login. Caitlin Lunt realized she could order Barbies and other toys without her mom knowing until, of course, all those boxes started arriving. Almost $400 Ooh. worth of toys showed up at their doorstep. Her mother said instead of returning the toys, though, to Amazon, they plan on donating them to a local hospital. So she's not in too much trouble, but she will be in lots of trouble if it ever happens again, right? Caitlin's mom admits she should have been a lot more vigilant watching her daughter. She wants other parents to know there are security controls available to prevent this sort of thing. Geez, all for Barbies. Yeah, but you know, they turned that into such a good thing, I donating agree. it. I agree. Mom is pretty understanding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty understanding. It's all for a great cause. Yeah, so I overall, don't know if I would have just gotten a stern talking uh, to. <laughs> I don't think uh, we probably come from the same topic. <laughs> so either. I do not think so. But taking a look, another look at our seven day forecast. We are seeing those warmer temperatures all across the borderland. We are experiencing those average temperatures right now. 93 degrees your expected high today. And then that moisture lingering on in for your Friday and your Saturday.
Okay, thanks so much, Amanda. Thank you so much for watching CBS4 Daybreak. For updates throughout the day, check CBS4Local.com. And we're back at 12 for CBS4 Noon. We'll see you then.